see her with a freaking huge house like that. We know where she is. <laughs> so here are some things. Now, this is all stuff happened in the present time. Okay, that's happened in our lifetime probably. Okay. Um, visitors and staff say that they hear footsteps when no one's around. Um, banging doors, mysterious voices, doorknobs turning when no one's there, um, and cold spots felt throughout the house. But she did have a lot of seances there. Yeah, and if she really was haunted by all those people, they could still be wandering there going, That's trying true. to find her. And like, where the hell is she? Very true. Well, how come there's only one toilet? They're just going up, they're those, <laughs> yeah, they're just going up those stairs that don't lead anywhere. Yes. So, um... So that's so the cold spots are happening, and then in the grand ballroom, people say they see a handyman repairing the fireplace. And it's always him there repairing the fireplace. It's just what he does. He's stuck in a loop of repairing the fire. How boring! Yeah. Um, and then the Daisy bedroom where she was trapped during the thing, the earthquake. Um, apparently, people in the hallway can hear sighs coming from in there, but there's no one in there. Like probably how she what she was doing when she was in there, like oh, I'll never get out or something. I don't right. know. Yeah. So but she was probably like distraught, and you could hear someone in there. Um, they've seen people have seen a dark figure in that room. Now she wore her mourning clothes, like you know, grieving clothes. Yeah. Her whole rest of her life. Right. It wasn't standard <laughs> to wear. You had to wear it for a certain amount of time, but she did it for the rest of her life. So a dark figure could have been her. Mm-hmm. Um, also, people try to take pictures. Either the picture doesn't, the camera won't work, or it's a picture of a white, ripply mass, like a wavy weird. white mass. Like it just looks like a weird exposure. Yeah. Except um, for now, like digital cameras, there's no nothing to expose. Yeah. There's, they don't use film. Right. So, like creepy. So there's a spot in the house called the Hall of Hall of Fires, and there's several fireplaces in the hall, um, and there's a maintenance guy who's working on a, on a ladder and he felt someone tap his back and then he turned around and no one was there. He's like, okay. And he starts working again and then he feel, felt a shove and he was like, oh shit, I'm out of here. And he like, <laughs> the yeah, room. He's sure. like, I'm oh not working. God. I'm not working in there anymore. Nope. Um, See ya. There, it said that there's a spirit named Clyde that <laughs> appears in the coal chute in the basement. He was a handyman that worked there during the time that she lived mm-hmm. there. Um, and the tour guides of the building will not go to the third floor because they feel like or they say they hear strange voices and footsteps, and they're like, nope, I'm not going to the third floor. That's creepy. Nope. Um, and then if you're standing in the garden and you look to the second story window, many people have said they saw a bushy-haired lady looking out at them. Now, I don't know who the bushy-haired lady is, but people have taken pictures, and they say that she's in the pictures. I couldn't find a picture online, but if you can find a picture online, I want to see it. So if you're listening to this, send it to our email, the cousinsweird at gmail.com. Sure. <laughs> um and then one staff member reportedly said that he saw her, Sarah, in her black dress walking through the garden before. Now, over a dozen psychics have come to here, and they all say that it's haunted, and they believe Sarah's still there, which she kind of trapped herself in life there, so... It makes sense. It makes she'd sense. Be she'd be there in death, death right? Um, and then, did you know the Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures was there? Ooh. And they reported that there was a seven-degree drop in temperature in different spots in the house, and they heard the crew members' names and phrases like, I hate you. <laughs> and <laughs> kill. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to leave now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Um, okay, so here we go. So that's basically the summary of the whole thing. Now, in 2012... Um, Sarah Winchester, a biography of Sarah Winchester was written, and it was called Captive of the Labyrinth. And the author was Mary Jo Ignafo, and she was a history teacher. So in this book, she writes about Sarah's life and stuff, but she disputes all that stuff about spirits, about her seeing a medium, about, I thought something fell on my shirt, about seeing a medium, about her, like, talking to spirits and all that stuff. That none of that happened, according to her in her bi- biography. <clears throat> um, so there are two theories. Did she build a house? This was her niece's biography? No, this is her bi- a biography about her. Okay. About Sarah. And who wrote it? Her name was Mary Ig- Joe Ignafo, who's a history teacher. Oh, okay. That's right. So we're supposed to believe her because she's a history teacher. Right. But, but she whatever. wasn't there. Yeah, she wasn't there. What does she know? So, <laughs> so there are two theories. No, I didn't mean that, Mary Joe. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You probably know a lot more than I do. Probably. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. So there, <laughs> there are two theories. Did, oh, she was, a, was she a grieving woman who um, 
was worried about ghosts haunting her because of the rifle, the died of the rifle, and she felt she had to keep doing that, blah, 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 build the house, appease the ghosts, blah, blah, blah. Or was she a grieving widow with no formal ar- architectural training who built whatever she wanted because she had the money to do it and the weirdness of it was that she just didn't know what she was doing so she they'd build and it didn't work so she just move on to the next i think that the fact that they built 24 7 speaks to the fact that they were constantly building now mary joe says they didn't she's many times that they had time off but did she have more than one group of 13 men working i don't know she could have had I feel like the whole use of 13, you know what solidified it for me? The 13 times she signed her will. For sure. That's just weird. For sure. Right? So there was something definitely going on. And that room that was like a seance room and had two doors in, like, why are, Why was it like that? Like, there's so many things that are so weird. Why did you only have one toilet when you had all that money? Like, <laughs> why? <Right. laughs> Especially if you have 13. No, she probably had more than one toilet. Did yeah. only one worked? Yeah. This is insane. Yeah. Only one was hooked up. So, I mean, there's two theories. Do you think that she just wanted, she was kind of kooky and just wanted to build? Or was she really doing, I think it was both. I think she, she felt she was being, I think she was guilty about her money. She wanted to give her money to people. So she was able to, and then she, when she died, she donated her her money. Um, Her niece got like $3,000, a $200,000 trust and her possessions. The house went away, but all the money she had left over, she, like, donated back to her hometown for, like, a hospital and all this other stuff. So she gave yeah. money back. Um, so I think it might have been a little of both. I don't think she... I think she was a little crazy. I think she was Just really, a little? She was eccentric. For sure. Eccentric, she intelligent, eccentric. had too much money. Right. And a uh, recluse. And, and I think, honestly, losing her baby and then her husband that yeah, close together, young. it just kind of, like, I think it might have kind of broke her a little bit. Her oh. psyche was a look. Right. And I think that, you know, like like we said, spiritualists, mediums were huge then. And I think people would use them to help them make life decisions and sure. find things out. So it, it makes sense that it's a little bit of both. She liked, she made a, she probably liked building and architecture and wanted also not to piss off ghosts. Yeah. Which I don't want to piss them off either. So no. I get that. Um, but like you said, we can, you can go visit the, the Winchester house now. Their website is winchestermysteryhouse.com. Mm-hmm. And you, they have like all kinds of cool pictures and videos. I don't know if they, they might even so, have like a walkthrough. Yes, yeah, so you can do. It's insane, this house. Yeah. It's insane. Like, it's just like unfathomable. It looks like something that is fake. Yeah. You know, you it, to see, to look at it and think that's real. That is not CG. That's an actual freaking house. It's, right. It's nutty. It's just nuts. Right. How big this thing is. Exactly. So they do have a virtual tour that's like $5 to rent for 72 hours or something. And you can do it. I sh- we should have done it before we did this. But we can sure. do it after. Um, but there's an All Hallows Eve tour. They have axe throwing on the property. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that if it's haunted and make them back at me. Um, sure. But there's all sorts of different tours you can do. Um, and over 10 million people have been through there since 1922 when i'm on their website it's like houdini's spirited escape so i know like, right oh my god so cool you can have special events there you can visit them like the 360 tour that's kind of cool so that way it lets you like explore the house without if you can't like travel yeah like Cal- because not everybody can travel to california yeah we're not packing up tomorrow and going so no it'll be a cool thing to do yeah that's really cool so that's the story of the Winchester Mystery House. Ooh. Ooh. It's creepy. So uh, we just did our first podca- podcast episode, and I'm a little tipsy. <laughs> a little bit. I got to wait a few minutes before I go home. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, if you liked it, you should follow us, subscribe to our podcast. Is that yes, what you're saying? Yes, yes. Go to our, our Facebook page. Facebook page or Instagram. Which is The Cousins Weird. Yep. Is it just the Cousins Weird or Cousin Weird's podcast? No, the Cousins Weird, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We're doing, right. uh, we have all of them. It's this Cousins Weird for all of them. And then you can reach out to us with your own creepy stories or suggestions for future cre- stories to tell um, at our email address, which is <laughs> Cousins Weird. Cousins Weird at gmail.com. <laughs> Took me a second there. I am, I'm 45, so you know, all those. And I drank a drink, so my brain cells. <laughs> so, um, 
We uh, are on Spotify, so please follow us. Spotify, all the subscribe, yeah, all the places that you can find things. Um, Next, our next episode, we're gonna try to do them at least one week. Um, Yes. So Margaret's gonna take on that one. So it should be interesting. We're not gonna tell you what it is yet. No. Be on the wait. And um, thanks for listening. Yeah. We're excited. And creep, creep it, it real. We- <laughs> creep it real. I screwed it up. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Creep, creep it, it real. Creep it real. <laughs> creep it real. <laughs> People, creep it real. Maybe we should do this at the beginning before we've drank anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs>